Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back. We're here live in San Francisco for VMworld 2014. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE. We extract the signal from the noise, we get the tech athletes in from CEOs, entrepreneurs, startups, whoever we can get that has that signal. We have Pat Gelsinger, the CEO of VMware here in the house. Pat, great to see you again, great keynote. Hey, thank you. Uh, you've been a good. great thank friend you. of theCUBE, five years now running, just want to put a plug in. Five years, wow. Yeah. I want to thank you for this amazing gift of pens we got from the VMware opening campus day, great pens. Um, celebrating you guys opening up officially the Palo Alto campus. How's that going? What's happening with the campus? Oh, well, well, first, the campus opens great. Thank you for joining us uh, there for it. It really was just a fabulous place. I mean, a beautiful campus, and you know, we have uh, the greatest employees, so we wanted to give them the greatest place to work. And uh, so the campus has gone fabulous. We've opened up almost all the buildings now on campus, just two more to build out. And uh, you know, we're hosting all sorts of wonderful people who want to come in and see the coolest place in Silicon Valley now. It's like, you know, it's like China over there. Are new cranes going up and putting new buildings up there. Are you guys done with construction there? What's happening? You guys expanding like- Two crazy. more buildings to go. Two more buildings then, to go. <laughs> then we're done for a while, so. <laughs> almost there, <laughs> almost there. Years. Right, yeah. I, I get worried when there's so many cranes going around, uh, you know, do I need all my employees to wear hard hats or something? It's like, no, we're soon done with that and we can get everybody to work, so. So Robin kicked off the keynote uh, before you came on. She talked about staying in the course mm -hmm. and user computing hybrid cloud, server defined data center, then you came out and laid out essentially the vision of this transformation that's happening. Mm -hmm. What's the state of your vision there? Expand on that keynote and share with the folks who might not have caught it live. What was the crux of the, of the presentation? Because it had a lot of Pat Gelsinger vision. It felt like, hey, it's, it's transformative. We even had mm -hmm. some guests on, you know, talking about commentary and the announcements. Are they playing defense, offense? You're not mm -hmm. a defensive player. Yeah. You're an <laughs> offensive player. So talk about the offensive moves for VMware sure, and how sure. that keynote struck uh -huh. a chord there. Well, you know, the first one is we really started with this this phrase, brave new IT. You know, and the nexus of that was, you know, all of our, you know, VMware faithful, right? The people, the V admins, the people who've been using this, you know, they are becoming critically important to the businesses that they serve going forward. Because not only is it about them doing their job, but with SDDC, hybrid cloud, and user computing, it's them redefining the entire infrastructure for the business. And when the CEO looks down across his leadership team, who's the most competent person there to navigate through all of these IT trends that are emerging to necessarily redefine their businesses, and we call this a liquid business, right, that's changing. So very quickly we're seeing that businesses redefine themselves from education to government, you know, to transportation, right? Uber today, not owning any assets, has a market cap equal to that of Hertz and Avis combined. I mean, we're just seeing these things emerge so quickly. And who's the smartest guy on technology in the room? The IT guy, yeah. right? And you know, out of that we laid out, you know, obviously our continuing progression with the software defined data center, you know, updates on major projects, you know, bringing those uh, components together in a big way. One of our first and I think most significant announcements today was a lot of the choice announcements. You know, adding an OpenStack distribution. So if you're a vCloud user, right, and want to have the programmatic uh, ability of infrastructure through the OpenStack APIs, you now get it with VMware. We also announced an embrace of containers. Uh, and uh, containers, you know, this uh, 20 year overnight success, right? Where all of a sudden, lots of discussions around containers and how can I use containers as a new app delivery model? Well, the best way to deliver apps for an enterprise? On top of the VMware infrastructure. So we announced relationship with Google and Kubernetes, uh, with uh, Docker and one of the leaders in that space early, and how we're going to make them containers without compromise in the data center for enterprise uh, customers. So on the, con on the container piece, yeah. last, last year we asked you here on theCUBE about Docker and containers. You're like, oh, containers been around for a while. What made you go, hey, this Docker thing's got legs? Was it the community thing part of it? Was it the open source tie-in? Was it the interoperability? You know, containers is not a new concept, as you had pointed mm -hmm. out, but what's changed for you and VMware over the past year to yeah. make that happen? And it still is very early. You know, let's, let's be clear, John, that uh, you know, we're very much in this early nascent phase, right, in the hype cycle curve, you know, we're way <laughs> up, we're probably going to go through the valley of despair, right, uh, in this uh, technology, but, very quickly, there's a broad set of these third-gen developers that are saying, 
containers is a cool way for me to package, deliver, and manage app deployment over time. And we're saying, hey, if, that's, if that is how people want to be able to deliver apps, then we, the preferred infrastructure for delivering apps, we're going to embrace and enable that uh, as well. So it very quickly came together and we engaged with Docker and Google uh, as partners and they said, absolutely, we want to partner with you in this yeah. space. And so all the pieces just sort of snapped together overnight. Right, we've been working with them, making meaningful contributions in the space. That's a DevOps ethos, right? That's basically cloud, right? I mean, that's essentially... Well, you know, DevOps is a funny term, yeah. right? Because <laughs> it was funny, we had, you know, I had a bunch of my guys at the DevOps uh, conference, and you know who was there? It was all IT guys, not developers, right? It's really a progression of developers uh, dev. to, to <laughs> DevOps into IT. And we really say that DevOps is sort of where developers and IT come together. Right, and so we really are trying to enable DevOps to satisfy the business guys. And if I go back to my Brave theme, you're seeing shadow IT and developers and line of business go around IT, and IT is now being, through announcements like today, armed with the tools to go to developers and say, oh no, I'm your friend. Yeah, step out of the shadows. I'm, I'm going to enable you with the coolest, most efficient infrastructure, and I'm still going to have it secure and managed as well. Right, you don't need to be right, you know, running in these environments that we can't scale, manage, and secure. Your apps now can operate in an enterprise-worthy way. Well, that right once, you know, run anywhere concept is very powerful. It, it is the premise, if I understand it correctly, that you'll bring that enterprise capability, the security and other management capabilities to that concept? Yeah, the VM doesn't change. Right, we're adding Docker on top of the VM and enabling it with some cool new technologies, like I mentioned Project Fargo, that actually make that delivery of the container on the VM more efficient and lighter weight than a bare metal uh, Linux implementation of Docker. I mean, that's really powerful, it's really cool that we can do that and we have some cool technologies that we're showing off that enable that and be part of our next major vSphere release. So you touch that base, you touch the OpenStack, you got you know, uh -huh. some action going on there and sort of embracing OpenStack, more developers in, in OpenStack. Mm -hmm. um, VMware has a tough act to follow. I mean, when you think about the whole, where we've come from, I mean, it seems so simple now. You know, servers underutilized, saved, you had a 10x disruptive factor. And now you've got to do it again. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I remember Maritz used to talk about this deeper business integration. He'd talk about it like this was grand vision, but you're actually now have been executing on that. Is that where the next wave comes from? That deeper business integration? You talked about transforming infrastructure. So how do you do it again? Is it a, is it a cost reduction? Is it a business integration? Is it, as you say, transforming that in infrastructure? What does that mean to the customer from, a, mm -hmm. from an operational standpoint? Yeah. And, you know, if you're the IT guy, Right. Do you want to spend a lot of your time worrying about the infrastructure? Actually what you want to do is have this programmable, scalable, flexible infrastructure that enables you to go worry about the business problems which are in the apps. Right, because you want the IT guy spending all of his time and those people say, how can I do new application services? How can I enable new business models, et cetera? So he wants this flexible, programmable, secure, managed infrastructure and he wants to worry less and less about it and e.g. it needs to become more automated, and more efficient, more scalable. And we walk into that discussion and say, you know, we've earned the right CIO because we've demonstrated more value, more efficiency, more quality of software, and we now have 80% of the world's applications running on top of the software that we do missed, uh, uh, for you, and we've earned the right to show that we can do that for the full data center to be able to do that both on and off premise in a reliable, scalable, managed, and secure fashion so that we enable you, Mr. IT, to go deliver the environment for the developer, so to uh, deliver the environment on and off premise, to secure all those next generation devices and applications as well. And that's what we're off to do for you, and we deserve a seat at your table well, to help you Well, and the Federation you helps you with that seat. Go, you, got, you guys got a pretty big role in the Federation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. Um, so I wanted to ask you about the financial analyst meeting. Uh, uh -huh. Did you get a lot of questions about that, you know, about the whole spin out thing, and, and how was that addressed? Uh, Actually, surprisingly, didn't come up? not a question didn't come at up. all. Because it's already come up, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, we've yeah. talked about it before, and you know, largely, I mean, those things, I mean, EMC is addressing those things. We've been very proactive in our position, right? We think the Federation is the right model, right? It's working, it's delivering value, we're quite committed to it, and, we, and we're showing uh, quite a number of cases where we're adding value as a result of it this week. 
You know, we announced uh, the uh, EMC as one of our uh, Evo Rail partners. We announced the Viper-based object service for the vCloud uh, Air service that we announced this week, announcing new solutions that we're doing with them. So lots of different areas that we're just demonstrating the value that comes from the Federation. Well, we know Joe a little bit. We know it's not going to happen in anytime <laughs> soon. But So what kinds of things did come up? Were they nitty gritty things around you know, enter, uh, uh, enterprise license agreements, uh, 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 2015 guidance, what, share with us. You know, what Lots you of questions should. around 2015. And you guys shared a little bit more maybe than on the last Yeah, we, yeah, we gave them a framework to go look at uh, 2015. Lots of questions uh, uh, about the, the strategies that we've laid out. You know, how will this NSX thing play out? How rapidly is that going to grow? vSAN, how rapidly are you seeing that grow as well? vCloud Air, how are you going to win in that business and do it in a you know, margin effective way for uh, VMware? And how does this vCloud Air network partnership uh, work? You know, and based on that, you know, how, how should we look at your growth profile going forward with your traditional business as well as these new business areas and what's that going to look like over 15 and beyond? So those are sort of the nature of the questions. So that with the air piece is interesting to, to John and me because we've been trying to sort of parse through Okay, on a, on a long-term basis, you guys software everything, you talked about that um, at quite some length, and the business model's great, marginal economics go to zero, and you see, you see some of that happening with the public cloud, where, so the traditional outsourcing is starting to follow that, mm -hmm. that, that software, mm -hmm. marginal economics line. So my question relates specifically to how your, whatever it is, 4,000 partners, how, can you replicate that kind of marginal economics at volume? Mm -hmm. Or is it more of a high touch belly to belly model? Well, you know, we, we definitely are viewing this as the potential for a, uh, a very scalable model, right? Working with service providers who invest substantial capital, who have data centers, who have networks, you know, have unique uh, you know, governed assets in their own countries that they participate in as well. You know, we're building the stack. Right, you know, being prescriptive in the hardware, building the software layer uh, that we need to go with it so that we can operationalize a seven by 24 service that scales and do so with this hybrid model. You know, not be over here in the race to the bottom with you know, Amazons and Googles. We're over here focused on enterprise customers to deliver value of how these things work across the boundary of on and off premise, the hybrid cloud, and enable rich enterprise class services on top of the platform. And we're going to do so with what we do, we're going to leverage partnerships like Savvis, uh, CenturyLink, like the SoftBank partnership, and we're going to enable this 3,900 partners with additional service offerings as well. It's a very effective business so, model. And, but you will build out your own data centers, or, or, well, or not? You, you know, we're not building our own concrete air yeah. conditioning and networks, right? We're doing colo for the, the core vCloud Air offerings uh, for those, but we're enabling our partners to do that as well. So but here are the recipes, you go build it and operate it uh, as well. So that's a technology transfer, IP transfer. And you know, for that we get a recurring revenue stream as they go run our software in their data centers right. and services. So the combination of the two we think gives us a very effective business model for the future. So Pat, last year I asked you about the, uh, the, the you announced the hybrid cloud all in, I made a comment uh, kind of off the cuff, it's a halfway house, got you agitated, you're the halfway house, and you said <laughs> no, it's not, it's the, it's the final destination. I took a lot of heat for that, I follow my sword, I'll, I'll eat my own words there. But it turns out absolutely correct, right? That's absolutely the destination. That is the number one conversation. It's hybrid cloud, certainly mm -hmm. on-prem, mm -hmm. off-premise, new economics, value creation. So I got to ask you, uh, and the question from Twitter has come in along the same lines is, you know, ask Pat about moving up the stack, and obviously want to about the end user piece, but inside the hybrid cloud destination, what does the VMware vision of moving up the stack mean, and what does that mean to mm -hmm. you? Yeah, and we're, we, you know, we're drawing the line. You know, anybody who lays out a strategy, to me it's more important to answer what you're not doing than what you are doing. Right, and for us, you know, we're not doing hardware, making that clear, we're enabling hardware partners. We're not doing consumer, right? We're focused on the enterprise customer, and we're not doing apps. Right. And you know, we are enabling more services, enterprise services like DR as a service, desktop as a service, but we're not going into the app space. So that's the line that we're trying to draw. Everything that's an enterprise class service where people need you know, enterprise capabilities, that identity, a DR, storage capabilities, things that really are common services for apps to utilize, that's what we're doing. But that's as far north or far up the stack that we'll go. I asked Steve Herod on our CrowdChat pregame on Friday what the hot opportunities are for startups. He said security, or mainly not getting caught at this perimeter-based security. What's mm -hmm. your view on that? 
well, you know, the crusty, you know, the hard, crusty exterior and the soft, gooey inside, as I described it this morning, my morning breakfast every day. And, uh, you know, with it, right, this whole idea of micro-segmentation at NSX really redefines how you build networks. And that's going to allow us to refactor every aspect of security, every aspect of routing and load balancing, et cetera. We, you know, we announced the F5 partnership. You know, the Palo Alto Networks partnership is really enabling us to execute on the micro-segmentation use case. You know, it really is transformational about how services and networks are operated inside of data centers. And you know, and we have the uh, pole position here with the NSX platform. One of the most common questions we're getting from the crowd is, when are you going to get a Twitter handle? Oh, <laughs> you know, I've never been a good social guy. Exactly. So yeah, we, can, okay, we, gotta, we have an so. engagement <laughs> container for you for that. We'll, we'll show you the engagement container. Well, thank chat. you. You can help yeah, me out with yeah, that. We'll That'll be good. Thanks, yeah, yeah. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, so, on end user computer, let's go to that part because San, um, Sanjay uh, uh, is on board. Um, the acquisition. Give us the update. Watch, I mean, right. what's mm -hmm. coming through that? Oh, what a, what a team. You know, Sanjay, you know, has been a great leader, right? He, we brought together a great leader, uh, leadership team, you know, Summit and John Marshall, I mean, passionate and aggressive in that space. You know, the uh, combination of the new assets, the AirWatch team, the revitalization of Horizon, you know, DAZ as a service on the platform, right? The new, uh, you know, we just announced Cloud Volumes, okay. you know, it's a very cool, the dynamic app uh, capability. So overall, really coming together, momentum increasing in the uh, marketplace, and Sanjay's done a really fine job right at driving us in that area. What a difference a year makes. Pat, we wish we had 34 minutes, which was your record. We're just getting cube. started, John. Uh, <laughs> tell your hand was going to go another 30 minutes. But I know you got some, I mean, appreciate your time, but I want to give you the final word. And we talked about this briefly earlier. Um, everyone always wants to ask, oh, is this a defensive move? Is this, a, you know, what's the strategy? I want, I've never seen you as a defensive player. I mean, in all the interviews we've done, knowing your history, you're an offensive mm -hmm. player. You talked about years ago, get out in front of that next wave or you'll be drift away. I don't see that defensive. What is the VMware offense? If you could describe the offense for VMware as a company. Well, you know, and, and, and answer the question yeah. about offense, defense. Are you yeah. making defensive moves or are these, is it my off base by categorizing the offense? Uh -huh. Well, I, I think we're absolutely playing offense. Right, you know, if you think about, you know, we're transforming networking, we're transforming the entire data center operation, we're delivering the first truly hybrid cloud, right, you know, enabling secure managed environments on those devices. So unquestionably, overall, we are playing offense. Now, hey, some things I think we should have done quite sooner. You know, we should have been in the public cloud space earlier, mm -hmm. right, in that, and we're having to catch up. Uh, in that space. You know, the moves that we've taken in the OpenStack, I think they're pretty well-timed. The moves that were taken in containers, I think we are way ahead of anybody else in terms of delivering enterprise container environments in that respect. So I think every one of them. m activity looking good right now? As always, <laughs> as al you know, hey, I just announced one last week, I got more in the pipeline, you know. You know, we're never finished. Organic innovation, inorganic innovation, we're playing both, right, and we're absolutely playing offense because here we're playing to win because our customers want the very disruptive nature of the products that we deliver with the quality of the brand of VMware, that's what they want from us. And more open source as part of that playbook? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. See that grow? Oh, absolutely, you know, we will use open source every place that we can to accelerate the offerings that we bring to our customers. You know, we're not fundamentally changing our business model, right. but hey, we you can add like open source components <laughs> uh, to it, and we will, and today's open so uh, stack announcement is a great demonstration of that. Okay, Pat, put the bumper sticker on this to end the segment. What's the bumper sticker say for this year's VMworld? What's, what's on the bumper right now? What's it, what's it say for VMworld? Enabling brave new IT. Pat Gelsinger, CEO of VMware here inside theCUBE. Always great to have him, our fifth Thanks, year. Man. We love having him on, great, great athlete, tech athlete. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after the short break.